This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Use the link in the description to find out more about the fascinating content they have to offer. It's often said that there's nothing new under the sun. In a way, this is true. The appearance of our world changes with time, but at its center we follow in the same basic footprints as our ancestors, altering just enough to fulfill our desire for superficial change. And nothing exemplifies the cyclical nature of our reality better than jazz. Despite having left the mainstream decades ago, jazz lives on in the music of some of our favorite popular artists. From rappers like Kendrick Lamar and Anderson Pack to legendary producers like Flying Lotus. In this video, we're going to explore where jazz and hip hop came from, how they met, and how they coexist today. Jazz was born in the early 20th century, in African-American communities of New Orleans, a city in the southern United States. The genre's musical roots come primarily from southern blues music, which was itself a hugely influential vehicle for African-American expression in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Well now, meet me in the bottom. European influence in New Orleans quickly led to the incorporation of brass instruments within the genre. Trumpets, saxophones, and trombones are now considered ubiquitous with jazz. Jazz quickly took on an identity of its own. Despite being largely instrumental, jazz became a valuable form of expression for black musicians, who, due to their social status, had no access to proper musical training. Because of this, an emphasis on improvisation and originality grew over time. Musicians like Louis Armstrong became incredibly popular for their solo work, while big jazz bands went on to define the sound of the 1920s. Over time, as racial segregation loosened its grip on America, musicians of all races were able to form jazz bands together and build off of their heritage to enrich the music. Before long, jazz was seen as a musically progressive and avant-garde genre. By the mid-50s, right around when the first hip-hop artists were born, jazz was evolving at an incredible rate. Rhythmic and melodic complexity were some of the most important characteristics of the genre. As time went on, jazz only grew more complex. Subgenres like the heavily experimental and avant-garde free jazz, or the deeply atmospheric cool jazz, were growing across America, infiltrating almost every corner of music. Hands, everybody, if you got what it takes, cause I'm Curtis Blow and I want you to know that these are the boys. In the late 60s and early 70s, while Frank Zappa and Miles Davis brought jazz to the masses with rock and jazz fusion records, something different was brewing in the Bronx. Marginalized youths from immigrant and low-income families were coming together in the then-dangerous New York City to combine their cultural heritage and make a new kind of music. DJs at block parties and clubs began isolating percussive breaks from funk and soul songs, noticing that hard-hitting percussion excited dancers more than anything else. They took this further and further, slowly building on the percussive-based sound that still defines hip-hop to this day. Similarly to jazz, hip-hop quickly became a way for poor youths around America to transcend social inequalities and escape from danger. Within just 10 years of its invention, hip-hop had spread around the country and become practically mainstream. Many early rappers and producers grew up listening to jazz, and it shows. Rappers began sampling jazz songs in the late 80s and early 90s. In 1988, the duo Gangstar sampled songs from Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker, two of the most influential jazz musicians of the 20th century. A Tribe Called Quest is another important jazz rap collective, having released six critically acclaimed albums over a period of nearly 30 years. Throughout the 90s and 2000s, rappers like Jay Dilla, MF Doom, and even Nas sampled jazz in their music. Jazz rap offered something that jazz never could, themes of political consciousness in explicit terms. This, of course, is inherently impossible in an instrumental genre like jazz. Jazz rap was seen largely as a reaction to the violent gangster rap that was popular in the 80s and 90s. It brought hip-hop to critics, college students, and rock fans. But jazz rap began to fade from the public eye as time went on, and the aggressive commercialization of jazz made it turn stale. It would be many years before Kendrick Lamar and his peers came along to revive America's first great musical tradition. In 2015, jazz was the second worst-selling genre, behind only children's music. 
After extreme commercialization in the 80s and 90s, jazz was considered oversaturated for many years, appreciated only by diehard enthusiasts. To hear jazz in a new context, cutting edge mainstream hip hop, was exactly what the genre needed to be considered interesting again. When Kendrick Lamar arrived on the scene, everyone knew he would change the game. The narrative structure of his sophomore album Good Kid Mad City was unprecedented, and just three short years later he somehow topped himself with what might be the most musically dense and conceptually rich hip-hop album of all time. Thanks in part to Kendrick's creative direction on To Pimp a Butterfly, not only are rappers sampling jazz, they're now producing original compositions as well. Today's jazz artists grew up listening to hip-hop, and with so many connections between the genres, collaboration comes easy. Many different contemporary jazz musicians played an essential part in the creation of To Pimp a Butterfly. To Pimp a Butterfly and its subsequent B-Sides release, Untitled Unmastered, are perhaps the all-time best examples of jazz within hip-hop. Kendrick managed to pull it off with an emphasis on collaboration and a determination to do things differently. In an interview with Billboard, the record's pianist Robert Glasper talked about how Kendrick felt it was important to collaborate with underappreciated artists. Popular rappers often limit themselves to collaborating with other popular rappers. It builds more hype and boosts sales. But like I said, Kendrick wants to do things differently. TPAB is about artistic merit. It's about musicianship and presenting a sound that no one else was listening to at the time. And the list of jazz musicians involved with the album is too long for this video, but there are a few particularly important contributors I'd like to mention. From three-time Grammy-winning pianist Robert Glasper to Flying Lotus, John Coltrane's grandnephew, to Pimp a Butterfly brought together almost every cutting-edge idea present in both hip-hop and jazz at the time. Terrace Martin, a famous jazz performer and record producer, helped bring the record to life. Having produced for Stevie Wonder, Charlie Wilson, and Snoop Dogg, he was able to provide exactly what Kendrick was looking for. Contemporary jazz stars Kamasi Washington and Thundercat played important roles in the production as well, contributing string arrangements, bass, and production to much of the record. Kendrick released an even more jazz-focused album just a year later. Untitled Unmastered is a compilation of songs recorded around the time of To Pimp a Butterfly. The record has strong themes of social and political commentary, while the music is heavily influenced by jazz, with instruments like double bass and saxophone featured front and center. Critics praised Untitled Unmastered unanimously for its self-awareness and musical cohesion. Other jazz rap artists worth checking out include Anderson Pack, Avondale Bowling Club, and No Name. A new wave of jazz rap was exactly what jazz needed to re-energize itself for the 2010s. Having long been considered America's first original musical tradition, jazz had unfortunately fallen victim to commercialization for a few decades. In the early 2010s, there was a whole generation of music listeners who had no experience with jazz as a form of genuine artistic expression. Kendrick Lamar and his peers were able to not only bring jazz back to life, they elevated it to a whole new level of political consciousness and musical experimentation. Jazz was built on the idea that social boundaries could be crossed with music. And a hundred years after it began in New Orleans, Kendrick Lamar has, in a way, perfected the formula. It's hard to tell if To Pimp a Butterfly is a jazz record or a rap record first, and in a way, that's what makes it so interesting. If you like learning, you should also check out this video's sponsor, CuriosityStream. They're a streaming service that focuses exclusively on providing you access to the most interesting documentaries available online. I personally recommend Destination Mars, an excellent look at the incredible possibilities of privatized space exploration. Membership starts at just $2.99 a month or $19.99 a year, and you can use the link in the description for a free 31-day trial. So check out curiositystream.com slash folksgeist and explore the vast array of interesting content their service provides. That's curiositystream.com slash folksgeist.